In this video, we're going to be showing you how to utilize Flux's form editor. To access it, simply log into Flux as an admin user and locate the settings icon on the top left. From here, if you've already enabled your advanced forms, which is designated by the toggle located here, all you'll have to do is select the Edit Web Forms button and then select the Form Builder tab on the top left. From here, you'll be presented with four forms that are included to you by default. These are an English and Spanish versions of your new patient form and your health history update. To preview or edit any of these pre-made forms, select on them and you'll get a prompt if you want to edit this form and you'll want to select yes here. Doing so will load you into the form builder tab showing you the form on the left hand side and all of your element or options on what you can add to your form on the right. You'll also be presented with the title of the form. In this case, it's the health history update. Next to the title are two dropdowns. The first is your language selector. In this case, we're gonna be using English, but we do have other options as you can see. And finally is the designation. We're designating this as an HHU or a health history update, but you also have the option as an NPF, which is a new patient form or none. On the top right of your editor, you'll have two buttons. The first is an update button, which will save any changes that you've made to your form. If you click on that button, you'll be presented with a success prompt. Next to your update button is your preview button. This will allow you and your staff to load a preview of your form so you can quickly look over the front to back of your form and making sure that everything is lined up accordingly. If you need to make any changes or if you'd like to add or remove other items to the form, you can simply go back to your editor by clicking on the first tab. The other two buttons at the top left of your editor are to create new form and to import a Flex form. If you want to create a new form, once you click on this button, Flex will make sure that you've saved this form by giving you a warning prompt here. If you've already saved all your current changes, you can select yes and you'll be presented with a blank canvas to start your own new form. If you want to go back to that previous form, we'll select the Forms tab and then select the form we were previously in and hit Yes to edit it. We'll be presented once again with the Health History Update in English and we can continue to edit. The Import Flex Form button can be utilized if you have multiple locations. Flex will allow you to save any created form as a file that can then be shared to other locations using this Import Flex Form button to load that form up. This will save your practice a ton of time where subsequent locations don't have to start from scratch and you can mirror forms across multiple locations of your practice. From here, we're going to be showing you how to edit any of the elements that are in the pre-made templates and how those edits or those changes reflect in the form itself. To do so, we'll split the screen in half, having the editor on the right half of the screen and having the preview of how the form will look on the left half. On the preview here on the first page, you'll notice the first question is, are you filling this form out for yourself or someone else? This is because of the element located here in the editor. To expand any of these elements that you've added to your form, you can double click or select the pencil icon located on the top right of each element individually. This expansion will allow you to see all of your options inside of this element. You'll see here your first option is to make this question required or optional. Underneath the required checkbox is going to be your reference name. The reference name is going to be utilized in case you import an answer to this question in your practice management system. Once a patient answers the question in your practice management system, the import would show filling out, which is the reference name, and then the patient's answer. The reference name is also utilized for your conditional logic, which we'll cover in just a few moments in the video. Underneath the reference name is your label, and this is what your patients are going to visually see on your form. So you can see here, the question is, are you filling this form out for yourself or someone else? And that's reflected here on the form. Conditional text, if enabled, will allow you to show a different label on the form based on the patient's age. A good use case for this feature is if your practice sees both adults and children as patients. Typically, when a form is for a child, their legal guardian or an adult of some sort are filling out the forms for that child. 
In those cases, you may want the verbiage to reflect that the form is essentially talking to that legal guardian or adult instead of the child themselves. So you can designate the patient age here, which we see as 18, and then use a different label. The conditional text is present on most of your options on the form. But for the sake of this video, we'll disable this for now. Next up is your association options. You'll be presented with a field dropdown. This is simply all the fields in your practice management systems that you can import this answer type into. These options will change based on the format and the element type on your form. If you make a selection here, you'll also want to make sure your import checkbox is selected. On some elements, you'll also be presented with a pre-populate option. This will allow that specific answer to pre-populate if this specific patient ever fills out the form again. A typical use case here is your health history updates if you require your patients to fill them out every six months or once a year. This will make it so on certain questions, your patients won't have to enter in, let's say, their address or their phone number as it'll pre-populate from Flex reading it off of your practice management system. And finally, you'll have a carry over to additional forms checkbox. The use case here is when you have a family with multiple members that are filling out forms all at one time. Typically, if a mother or father or legal guardian are filling out two, three, or even more forms for their children back to back, if the carry over to additional forms checkbox is selected, then any of those answers will be pre-populated only on any subsequent forms on that instance. For the sake of this video, we'll deselect the carryover option for now. Next up will be your width selector. You can choose full width, one half, one third, and one fourth. The one half, one third, and one fourth options are helpful if you want multiple items to be on one line of your form. This can help shorten the length of your form and make it easier and quicker for your patients to fill out. We'll see here if we choose someone else that the first and last name of the individual filling out the form are both utilizing one half widths, while the relationship to the patient is utilizing the full width of the form. You may be wondering how the first name, last name relationship questions showed up on the form when I selected someone else. This is possible based on conditional logic. If we go down a few steps to our editor here, we'll see the what is your name, first, last, and relationship items located here. Let's expand the first name with the pencil icon and see how we're able to use conditional logic to decide when we want to show these items based on the previous question's answer of someone else. You'll see here at the bottom of this element for the first name, we have the enable conditional logic box selected and we're telling the editor to show this question or this input option based on a reference name and a condition and a value. So based on this rule set here, the first name is going to show when filling out, which is our reference to the first question here, and we've selected someone else. That's why on our form, if we select myself, all of those items are now hidden, but if we select someone else, they're going to show. On this health history update, for example, that same rule set of showing when filling out has selected someone else is not only for this first input box, but also for the last name and then for the relationship to the patient. So if we close the first name expansion here and we look at the last and the relationship, we'll see the exact same conditional logic laid out. So now you get an understanding of how to use conditional logic to your favor, which will indicate when and how certain items either show up on your forms or are hidden on your forms. Utilizing this feature of conditional logic can be very impactful for your practice. Not only can it make certain forms shorter for certain individuals, but it can also help you ask specific questions based on a patient's input. And in the Flex Editor, there are no limitations. All you need to do is create a reference name on a prior item on your form, and you can set conditional logic to show or hide 
any questions, or any answer types in the editor. Closing the preview here for the relationship item, let's scroll back up to the first question in our form, which is asking who is filling this out. You'll notice that this is a radio group element, which is located on the right-hand side of the editor here. And on the left-hand side, they are represented by circle options. The options and the value that are imported into your practice management system can be different. In this case, we'll see here that our label that it's on the form is myself, but you also have a value to associate with that label. This can be anything that you would like and is hidden from the patient. Instead, if they select myself, and let's just use test here, if a patient then selected myself on the form and submitted that form, in your practice management system, the value would come through as the word test. For the sake of this video, we'll change this back to myself. Not only do we allow the differences between the label and the values here, we allow you to add as many options as you would like using the add option button, which will then prompt you to insert a label and a value. You can also use the X to delete these options. Another nice quality of life feature that Flux has added to this editor is to associate the answer types with an image or an icon. You'll notice next to the myself and someone else radio group options is a none dropdown. If we select on this, you'll get a plethora of options that'll allow you to designate these options as a larger clickable icons. This can be helpful when your patients are filling out these forms on tablets or any mobile device like a cell phone. For the sake of this video, let's use person one for myself, which will then see a representation of that icon here in the editor. And then we'll select person two for someone else. Let's look and see how that's represented when we choose to update the changes and then select preview. We'll now see here that the myself and someone else options are clickable icons that are now larger than the radio group buttons were. Once we select either of these options, the conditional logic stays the same and the selection is highlighted in blue. Now that we know the basics of how to utilize the form editor, let's maximize the screen and cover all of the options of the elements on the right hand side here. First is the header. This will allow you to label or title a specific section or page. The paragraph element will allow you to insert descriptive text. The text field is typically a single line input box for your patients, as we saw with the first, last, and relationship items in the preview of our form. The checkbox group will allow you to create a group of answers and also allow your patients to select multiple answers. With the radio group, you are still showing your patients multiple answers, but will only allow one to be selected. The select element is a dropdown where your patients can again select one option, very similar to the radio group, just in a different format. The date field will be utilized anytime you need your patients to enter in a specific date for things such as date of birth, for example. The image upload will allow your patients to upload images that you request on your forms. This can be items such as pictures of the patient or pictures of their insurance card, for example. Another nice thing about the image upload option on the Flux forms is if a patient is filling out their forms on their computers, for example, but the file is on their cell phone. Flex will send that cell phone a link, which they can access and attach the file from their cell phone, which will be transitioned into the form on the computer that they're filling it out on. The signature element is to allow your patients to sign a specific page or under a specific element. A page break as you can see here with the gray bar, will end a page and start a new page. A line break will start a new line on your form. This is helpful if you have items that are not full width. A text area is very similar to the text field, but instead of being a single line input for your patients, the text area is multiple line. And if you use the text area element, you can designate how many lines you wanna show by default. The rest of the elements are pre-made elements, such as gender, address, which will be your contact information, status, which is read from your practice management system, your conditions, medications, and referrals, as well as your allergies, 
will all be read from the tabs at the top located here. So any items that you've inserted into those tabs, which we'll cover here in a moment, will be represented by these elements. So there's no need to edit these manually within the editor. Your policies will also read from the policies tab. And these will be policies such as your informed consent, your office policy, your privacy and HIPAA policy, and so forth. And then you have manual icons if you want to add them in, instead of having them be attached to the element like we did with the filling out the form question for myself and someone else. And then if you created a new form, you can use the new patient or the health history elements, which are essentially templates of the new patient and health history update forms. And that way, you don't have to start them from the ground up, but you can use pieces of them to add to your own form. Covering again the conditions, medications, and allergies section, if we go into our conditions, we'll see here that for our heart or circulatory table, we have our options that we've inserted. You'll also notice now a language dropdown on the top right for each of these tabs individually. Selecting this dropdown, you'll be presented with the same language options that you had on the editor. If you're going to be using a form that's designated as a different language, you'll want to go to this dropdown select the language, and then translate the options with our translate button. But if we go back into our form builder, using the HHU in English that we've been editing, and hit yes here, if we scroll down, you'll see that the conditions element is present on the form. To see how that looks, we can click on the preview again, which will load our form, and we can go towards the page that has the medications and conditions listed on there. So you'll see the conditions are asking for those tables that we saw in the conditions tab. And if we select on any of them, it'll load all of the options that we had seen within that tab. Now that you know how to label, edit, and preview your forms, we hope to see you utilizing the editor in the future and hope you've enjoyed this video.